The 2024 Lenovo Legion 5 Slim AMD Edition is right here in my hand. I just picked this up off the Lenovo website. This is not a staggering change from the 2023 Lenovo Legion 5 Slim AMD. There's a few tweaks here and there. The CPU is more or less the same as the 7000 series AMD. They did tweak it with that new AMD AI feature. Same GPU as last year, so no change there whatsoever. Uh, there's a little bit of a change in terms of some of the other specifications here. The keyboard, you can notice a little bit different here. In 2023, I called the Lenovo Legion 5 Slim AMD edition the budget king. What I'm wondering in this video is, does the 2024 model still hold the crown as the budget king for gaming laptops? Okay, and let's have a look at the builder options here. So we only get one CPU option, it looks like, uh, at least in Canada here. So that's the 8845HS, which is fine because it's arguably the best laptop CPU on the market right now. We have three different options for the GPU. We get a 4050, 4060, and 4070, all going to be very capable. I mean, I would for most cases, I mean, 4060 is probably the sweet spot for a lot of people. Uh, you get kind of the best bang for the buck. The 4050 is still good, but it's not going to be able to keep up with the other two. And the 4070 that I have in my laptop here, I pay a little bit more for it. But in Canada, there actually is no 4060, at least not right now. Uh, so I got the 4070, which is fine. I mean, whatever, more power is more power. Four gigabytes of RAM mine had 16 gigabytes. And you'll see when we get to that part, it actually comes with one stick, which is very strange. Just 2242, I don't, it only has a 2280 that I've seen. So that's fine as well. And then there are two different screens as well, both totally fine. 1600p screen here that is 350 nits. Uh, it's a very good screen though. It does have 100% sRGB. So the colors are gonna be, it's got G-Sync, FreeSync, etc. cetera. Uh, there is basically the exact same screen that's brighter. So there's a 500 nit option. On this model that I'm reviewing here, I only had access to the 350 nits. Uh, there is no 500 nits, at least in Canada at the time of this. Again, brand new laptop. So probably down the road, they'll release it. I've used 350 nit legions and I've used 500 nit legions. I've actually used them side by side. Using it outside in really, really bright environments, 300 nit, 50 nits might be a little dim, but if you're using it inside, you're going to be totally fine uh, with 350 nits. So just base it on where your work environment is. They're going to look exactly the same. Otherwise, they're going to be the same type of color range, all that. 165 hertz versus 240 hertz probably not going to make really a difference for a lot of people you know this is a this is a 1600p screen you know this is not an esports laptop so probably not going to make a big difference i'd base it on how bright it is if you're in a really bright environment 500 nits if you're in a pretty much any indoor environment 350 is going to be fine metal top all metal slim 7 is all metal slim 5 is plastic metal hybrid so plastic on the bottom there uh, overall looks good though might be slightly slimmer than a pro but not by much so uh, you can see that there uh, a little bit of plastic but uh, you know at least from the top being all metal it still looks quite nice overall so the charger is 895 grams it's about two pounds or so it's about 2373 grams 3.2 actually that's almost seven pounds there so that's going to be yeah getting close to seven pounds for everything and that's a look inside. We have our little sleeve here. And there's the inside. Nice light interior here. Now they did make a change. You can see right off the bat, it has a black keyboard. Last year, the Slim 5 had a uh, basically the same color as this. So there was no transition from the actual keyboard, from the actual keyboard deck into the keyboard itself. The keyboard was the same color. I noticed this when I went to CES that I think all of the laptops this year have this black keys. I personally don't like it. It looks fine, uh, but it's more prone to fingerprints. So, I mean, why not make it this color, which is like very anti-fingerprint, but whatever. Uh, you get some grills up here, which I think are primarily just aesthetics. Power on button there. Camera up top there. But overall looks pretty good. All right, nice little trackpad. Basically a Legion. Looks pretty aesthetic. Looks nice. No issues whatsoever. Hey, new Ryzen tag. So that's new for the 8000 series Ryzen AI. So the 7000, uh, 7745HS, for example, 7945HS, um, moving from that last year into the 8000 series so far, there's really not much of a difference in terms of the actual raw chippage. The chip is basically the same. Uh, you're gonna get basically the same clocks and the same performance on this here as last year, but it does have this new AI that uh, AMD is pushing. So uh, it may actually perform a little bit better based on that. So uh, yeah, let's actually uh, open it up before we even turn it on because that's the fun part. Don't really see much of a change so far from last year other than that black keyboard. And of course the AMD AI sticker. 
Okay, quite easy to get open. I just used a little guitar pick on the front there and then literally just pulled it. Not hard to get into these normally. There we go. So that's a look inside the bottom there. We get a thermal pad, thermal pad. That'll be for NVMe 1 and NVMe 2. So that's nice. You don't necessarily need any form of heatsink. Typically the 5 and the 7s have like a metal heatsink. That'll take a lot of heat off here though. So no issues. A little bit of foam structure there and uh, you know some RAM structure. So it's not too wobbly. It's a plastic bottom. So I mean, it's, you know, you're gonna want some structure. And there's a look inside. We can see that there. Uh, looks pretty good. Very, very thick fans there, right? quite thick fans actually so that's really nice on both of them there very dense fins on both of the fans so you're going to get good air movement wide diameter and they're actually deep as well so you're going to get a lot of air movement there four heat pipes on the right side here three heat pipes on the left there uh, this should run really cool last year's slim 5 ran quite cool actually i think it ran cooler than the slim 7 it's just a thicker chassis so it should run pretty cool battery here is decently sized 80 watt hours on that there so Again, AMD model here should get really good battery life. Actually, very good battery life. I'm guessing. We'll have to see, but that should. I'm assuming we're going to get good battery. Wi-Fi there, fully upgradable. Uh, first NVMe there. That looks like an SK Hynix there. Yeah, so that's going to be a, probably a nice fast SSD. We shall see. Yeah, you do get a second slot here. So dual NVMe, NVMe 1, NVMe 2. Uh, you get also upgradable RAM here underneath this here, uh, which will, will pop up. And then you get your RAM underneath there. Oh, it's got a 16 and a six. So I ordered this with 16 gigabytes. And rather than sending me 16, rather than sending me eight and eight, they sent just a 16 gigabyte. So it is gonna run in single channel, uh, but DDR5 is a little bit weird with that. That's something to be aware of. Uh, you'll wanna get another stick if that's the case. Uh, so let's open this up. There's actually a thermal pad on the memory. Take that there. Let's see what kind of memory we get here. So that is an SK Hynix 16 gigabyte stick there. 5,600 megahertz. Uh, I don't think I have another one of those. I have a different brand, I have Crucial. I don't like the idea of mixing RAM, even though, you know, this is 16 gigabytes, 5,600 megahertz, so is that. Uh, yeah, you could screw up your timings, so you don't wanna do that. It will work, but it could give you in decreased performance. So if you buy this with 16 gigabytes, which I did, uh, and then you're going to add more RAM, this is the specific RAM you're gonna to wanna to buy. Okay, so that'll be this, the RAM you're gonna to wanna to buy, a second kit of that. I'm not gonna do that. I have several RAMs sitting around me. Uh, which one do I want to upgrade with? 5600 megahertz, and it's a low CL. I think it's CL40, so if you know about RAM, that means it's gonna be a little bit faster than some CL42 stuff. Okay, so RAM upgraded, so we went from 16 here up to 32. Close it up. You'll probably struggle to get a dual-sided SSD in here. Uh, there's quite a bit of chips underneath there, I can feel right off the bat. So yeah, that can take a dual-sided. So if you take a dual-sided NVMe, your right side will take the dual-sided NVMe, your left side will not take a dual-sided NVMe. So you can put in a max of one dual-sided NVMe, the other one must be single-sided. Okay, let's have a look at the keyboard here. So right now we don't have any RGB, that's done. Uh, you can do it through here, we'll do that in a second. Uh, we can turn it on with the space bar here, so it's function on. I don't know what the default profile is, but it's doing something. That'll be profile two, that'll be profile three. The keyboard is the exact same layout as previous Legions. There's no difference there whatsoever. It's basically exactly the same as the last year's Legion Slim. However, you can see that the keycaps are black. Last year, the Legion 5 Slim had a silver keycap, basically the same color as the chassis, and had the same style texture. I don't like this black key. Don't like it at all. I never didn't like it last year on the Legion 5 Pro. I openly admitted that I didn't like it. And I didn't like it on the 7 Pro. And I don't like it that the fact that they've added it to the Slims. Why do I not like it? The actual keyboard is fine. It's fantastic. But the keycaps here get fingerprints. The black gets fingerprints. Really bad, actually. Um, so I've used this for a little while. I'm not even a fingerprinty person, but you will get fingerprints all over your keyboard. And then everything else is going to be nice and clean. Uh, it also has kind of like a different texture. This has a smooth... You know, metallic or plastic, whatever, but smooth texture. Uh, these have, they're smooth, but it's, you can feel there's like a plasticky kind of, almost sl very slightly rubbery texture to it. I don't like that as much. I prefer it from last year. It may look nice for like a contrast purpose, but it, it, it doesn't improve the experience at all. But let's do a quick typing test here. So we'll do our little typing here.
It's your typical Lenovo Legion keyboard. So the 5 Pro and 7 Pro slightly like physically the keycaps are larger. I don't know if you can see that on camera, but the actual physical keycaps on the slims are small. So that's like a tiny, thin little thing actually. It's actually quite slim. Uh, but there's a lot of travel, right? Looks like they did add a co-pilot button, which is really annoying. I don't want that also. Lenovo, we'll get rid of that. I don't, I already uninstalled co-pilot. So I really hope that that can be remapped. Uh, anyway, so you can come in here and you can do your custom profiles here. So you can go static, uh, divide area. So you can go the whole thing or you can go part of it. So it looks like there's one, two, three, four zone lighting. Smooth, wave ref, right, light, blah, 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 blah. Um, and then you can come in here and you can pick all your colors. Uh, what color do I want? I like the purple. Yeah. Uh, there you go. So you can do four different profiles. I think the sevens have, like the seven lineups have more, but it doesn't really matter. I feel like there was only three last year, so maybe they added another one. And the trackpad itself is a decent sized trackpad. You can see that there. And mercifully, it's not like they didn't change that. So you get the smooth texture here, and then you get a smooth texture here. Very, very smooth, precise trackpad. Nice click. I feel like it's better from last year. It's a nice sharp click. I like that click. So that's a really nice trackpad. Overall, the input experience is quite nice. I don't have any problems with it. I prefer if this was like silver, whatever. I'll live. But, you know, I do have to complain about something. The actual top of the laptop here, this is plastic. You can see that there. Uh, you know, the lid is metal, but then the keyboard deck is plastic. The bottom is plastic. The sevens have more metal. The fives have more plastic. Um, but it, I'm pressing pretty hard here. It has a little bit of keyboard flex, right? But if you're actually typing, no keyboard flex at all, like none, when you're typing here. If you press on it, actually there's less than I thought. There's a little bit. It's actually more flex over here, which is weird. Yeah, so it feels great. Yeah, there's it's a plastic keyboard deck. Uh, you'd have to just really crush this thing to get it to move. You also have your power modes here, so you can go performance, which is performance. It'll give the most watts to the GPU and CPU. Balanced, quiet. You can also do that using function. Uh, you will find when I do my game testing that you can absolutely game on quiet mode, actually. And you can actually do that over, probably over USB-C, most likely. Custom mode, let's come in here. Fan speed, uh, you can mess around with your fan speeds at what percentage you want it. And then there's performance stuff. So you can do short-term power limits. You know, right now it looks like the CPU can do 54. Ooh, holy smokes. Up to 100 watts. So, uh, you know, you can mess around with that. That's basically, you know, going to be more like performance mode. Uh, Long-term, you can... Throw a lot of watts into that CPU if need be, if you don't need as much GPU. Uh, that's cool. Temperature limit 100 degrees. You can say, I don't want to go to 100 degrees, I want to go to 98. You have CPU to GPU dynamic boosting, so it will basically share watts between the GPU and CPU because we have one cooling system and one power supply to the whole system uh, you can share. So you can say, we're only going to share 15, or I can say, you know what, go up to 25 if you want. I don't even care. Uh, this is your GPU. 60 and 55 is like silent mode. That's about balance mode, and these are performance modes. Whatever, it's fine. GPU power limit, it's also fine. Uh, yeah, it's uh, so GPU to CPU, so it's going to steal power from the GPU and put it into CPU. Whatever. So you can play around with these things if need be. You don't have to. You can just use the default stuff. But if you really want to play with around with it, it's totally fine. Let's see what programs comes with the computer. So we have. Not too much bloat so far. Lenovo Avatar Master, that's a new thing. That's new for 2024, I've never seen that before. Nope, nope. So I'm gonna cap these off. Copilot, you can keep it if you want, I do not want it. Alrighty, otherwise it looks pretty good. So I guess you can just make like an in-game avatar or something like that. What the heck is this thing? Yeah, so you can just like make an avatar, I guess. I don't care. So that you can take that off if you want, whatever it's there. Uh, that's cool. So it's pretty clean, actually. Other than McAfee, that's it's a pretty clean system. Mac Lenovo doesn't load a lot of bloat on these things. Okay, now we'll do our audio test here. So if you have headphones, you're going to want to probably turn them down. Okay, that's 60. I'm going to turn it up. It's actually going to get pretty loud. So how's the audio? Uh, it's fine. It's exactly the same as last year. The Lenovo Legion 5, in general, the 5s have okay speakers. Uh, the 5 Slim, same thing. Okay speakers, 5 Pro, okay speakers, nothing special. It's just 7s where you get into the more premium speakers. It's fine. I mean, for a gaming laptop, it's probably good compared to many gaming laptops have 
kind of bad speakers. Asus tends to have really nice speakers, so it's fine. I don't have any problems with it. Uh, you know, compared to like a ThinkPad or something, it's going to be way better compared to, you know, like a MacBook or even the Lenovo Legion 7 type stuff. Those are way better. Okay, now we're going to look at the screen. Now there is uh, a couple different screen options. There is a 500 nit screen option for this laptop and a 350 nit screen for this laptop. They didn't have the 500 nit when I wanted to buy this. Um, so I didn't want to wait for who knows when the 500 is going to come. So I bought the 350 nit screen. For my purposes, I don't use my laptop like i don't use a gaming laptop outdoors so it won't actually matter but you know if it does i would probably lean towards the 500 nit screen it's gonna be a fair bit brighter turn it up a little bit there but again indoors it's fine right now because my lights are off in my office it's bright like it looks bright to me but even if i use this in you know my living room or my you know if i was in my living room or sitting area and it was like a bright sunny day it would be fine but if you took it outdoors uh, it might be a little dim so just things just to start here the reds look nice very good, good, like this is a good color accurate screen, pretty color accurate screen with good color space. So I don't suspect there's gonna be really any issues with, you know, the re that's very vibrant. It doesn't look good on camera, but it looks good in person. Uh, my phone just doesn't deal with this well. Uh, let's look at the blacks here. Those look, good. that's actually really nice. Good contrast ratio there. Uh, let's come in here. Yeah, good blacks. I'll, I'll use this laptop later off video and uh, at night, I'll do probably some video editing and stuff on the laptop. And I usually do that when I start to get tired, I'll turn the lights off and I'll notice if there's bloom. And if there is, I'll put it in the comments or something. Yeah, it looks really nice actually. The colors are really bright, vivid. Uh, the accuracy is good, good color space. So everything's looking nice here. It is a very nice screen. Um, depending on how much price premium there is, if you're at the 350 nit screen and then, you know, the 500 nit one is like 200 bucks more, screw it. Don't even worry about it. Like, I do prefer brighter screens, obviously. Um, but, you know, I paid a little bit more, but the 350, 350 nits is not a deal breaker. Like I said, unless you use your Legion outside in the sun, then at that point it would probably not be very bright. It would work, but you it would be a little dim. But it's a very, very nice screen. You can see that the colors look fantastic. Okay, we're just going to check the noise of the laptop here. We'll just get the baseline of my house, which is not quiet. 35, it's just, I do not have a quiet house. So about 56 or so under performance mode. The scores will be messed up because I'm switching in and out of modes, but you'll get an idea here. Considerably quieter. Uh, you'll see when we do the gaming test as well, how much quieter it is when you go on balanced or on silent mode, especially silent mode, it becomes much, much, much quieter. Here's a look at some benchmarks here. So we'll start with some Cinebench R23. You can see that right off the bat, there was a little bit of throttling, so you can see the max there in the red, but then it basically normalizes once the fans kick up and you don't get any throttling anymore. And you can see here that the scores are quite good. We're pulling off approximately 17,400, which is very good for an 8845HS, so very good performance on that CPU. I'm quite happy with that. Then you can see here that the Wi-Fi is good as well. We're getting 600 downloads, 755 uploads, so that's also very, very good. Battery life is exceptionally good on this laptop. You can see here that just kind of messing about doing some document editing. I was actually just writing up part of a paper here. Uh, brightness on 100%, but at 60 hertz refresh rate, you can see approximately 12 hours and 40 minutes battery life. That is very, very good. And then you can see here I did some 1080p 60 YouTube and you can see here on the far right that we're averaging probably around nine or so hours of playback time. I'd probably estimate this closer to be about eight or nine hours based on what I've been seeing so far on this laptop. So very, very good battery life if you're going to be doing document editing, text editing, browsing, that kind of thing. And then if you're just going to be doing pure media consumption as well, you're still going to get really good battery life. Here's a look at the built-in webcam, looks pretty good. I have a decent amount of light on the left, really not much on the right whatsoever. And it's separating out the lights from the darks pretty good. The polling rate looks fine. Just a little bit more light and uh, yeah, it seems to do pretty well. So overall for a gaming laptop, the camera is totally fine. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is a little bit of game testing. Let's check the sound here. So we're on performance mode, so it's gonna be very noisy, but that's fine, I guess. So 56, the fans aren't annoying, they're just not quiet. Go to balanced, huge drop already. 
And now silent mode. And silent mode is extremely viable in terms of gameplay. That's almost ambient for me. The fans are on, I can hear them. The mic's probably exaggerating it, but it's pretty quiet. I think my vent in my roof, in my ceiling is actually noisier than this. So we're gonna do a couple different types of game testing. I am gonna do, uh, show you the difference in performance between uh, silent, balanced, and performance mode. Uh, the reason why is I actually play most games in silent mode, which is crazy. It's just crazy to think. I play Baldur's Gate in silent like this. Uh, and then you turn up the volume, right? Let's get a little bit of volume here, right? The ambient of the city is like vastly noisier than the fans. So let's go through the different modes here. We'll just see what kind of performance we get. This is ultra 1600p, just quality DLSS. You don't need DLSS, but 89, 90. This is the most challenging area in the game. This is a very tough game to run. Lows of 39 unbalanced here. Right, a lot of people will probably play on balanced because the fans are pretty rec respectable here, not super loud on balanced mode. Uh, VRAM's not even close to being eaten up. GPU, CPU power is pretty, look at the, how low that is. These AMD CPUs are so efficient. Uh, where's the GPU, 575, pretty good. Let's kick it up to performance here, or see what we can get. Uh, we're at 100, 120 watts. Like it's really pushing a lot of watts into that GPU. It's a very it can definitely put a lot of watts into that GPU, right? which is, for some people, good. CPU's at 45. So definitely going to be performing. You can see the lows actually went down. All right. Good enough performance here. 80s, the 15, there's low. Uh, you know, But we're getting probably a little warm here. 73 on the 47. You can go up to about 80 or so. Uh, CPU's at 88, which is not within throttling range. Let's go back to balanced here. Kick out. Sometimes I find balanced actually performs better because it just, I don't know, maybe temperatures, the lows just usually come up. The raw performance went down slightly. Not hugely, but a little bit. Uh, but the lows are better. Now let's do my favorite and we'll go to silent mode. Reset that. And look at that performance. Yeah, we did drop, you know, we were at 80 something, 79 to 80, 82 or so. So, you know, we lost a few frames here and there but it's so quiet and the lows are really good, right? And if for some reason you can't play Baldur's Gate at 71 FPS, you could just add more scaling, right? Okay, now we're in now we're in Horizon Forbidden West, which is uh, pretty new actually. At least or it's new on PC. As you can see, I haven't played very far. Uh, so let's check the settings here. So we have just quality DLSS, nothing more. And looks like we're on just high here. Yeah, quality DLSS high. That looks like a probably a respectable way to play. And yeah, the game looks so good. Especially on this nice screen with good color accuracy. It's really nice actually. Nice and saturated. Yeah, so I mean, there's no point in going too much more into depth. It runs very well and looks great on the screen. Very, very nice, actually. 1600p, nice and crisp. Very saturated due to that really nice uh, color range on the screen. Nice and bright. Uh, looks better in person, to be honest. Like, yeah. so I'm capturing this externally. Um, I was going to do video capture, but I realized uh, I think a lot of people prefer if I do it this way. Because then it's you, know, you can experience what I'm experiencing. Uh, let's go down to balanced here and just see what we get. Huge drop in noise. Performance went down a little bit, but it's, I mean, still above 60, right? Average above 60, and those lows are really good. So, 4070 is no slouch. It may not be a 4080, but it's still 4070. So, what are my thoughts on the 2024 Lenovo 5 Slim AMD? Fantastic, just like it was last year. Uh, it was actually a very good laptop last year. The performance was outstanding. The chassis in that was good for the price, especially compared to other laptops in the price range. And, you know, all the upgradability, 
really nice on it. The screen is really nice on it as well. Uh, let's go over the negatives. Negatives are the launch price is a little high. Uh, it'll come down though. Lenovo always lowers their prices on their websites, so I don't recommend people buy into most laptops the day they launch. Uh, Lenovo has sales all the time, but so I expect this to actually be a really good price down the road. When I got it, it actually wasn't bad. I paid about 1600 Canadian tax in, uh, which is pretty good realistically for a brand new laptop. It's like a few, it was like a week old maybe at that point or maybe even just a few days. So that was pretty good. Uh, they'll come down slightly, but I mean, even at that price, I think it's fair, pretty fair to be honest, uh, compared to other laptops that have come out and that are coming out with this type of specification, uh, it's a very good price actually. I mean, a lot of laptops these days are pretty expensive. Uh, negatives other than that, um, I mean, the cooling is not gonna be as good as like a Legion 7 or something like that with a 4070. So, uh, you know, when you're doing Cinebench, it, the CPU can get a little spicy. Throw it in balanced mode and you lose what? What did we see, like 6% performance drop? And I've done a lot more, lot more game testing that are not gonna be in this video, be in the next video. And as expected, you know, you'd lose six, 7% performance total. So you go from, I don't know, 70 FPS to 63 FPS or something like that. Uh, and you, the noise is vastly quieter and, uh, you know, the fans get much quieter as well. And then silent mode gaming is my preferred way to play actually, because you, the laptop becomes basically silent and you get outstanding gaming performance. So nothing beats the fact that, you know, back in the day, even a few years ago, uh, you know, you'd be playing a game and you'd really would have to have the noise just so loud everything just absolutely tearing to get good performance nowadays with the 40 50 60 and 70 you can just throw it in silent mode and you're good to go cpu on this performs exceptionally well and uh, you know doesn't draw a lot of watts which is really nice good screen too uh, i would still probably recommend for people who work in very bright environments to move towards the 500 nit if you're outdoors for sure 500 nits for indoor people doesn't make a difference. I've been using this at 300 nits uh, since I got it. Like, I don't remember, that was a week ago. So I'm fully bright. Uh, and it's fine. It doesn't bother me, the brightness. And the actual colors on the screen is quite nice. 100% sRGB. It's a beautiful screen. Nice and sharp, high refresh rate. Looks nice and clean. So I'm very happy with that. Chassis is good. I mean, metal lid, nice. Good IO on it. Uh, plastic on this deck here, but it's, you know, it's premium. It's not going to be like some of those cheaper, really low end, you know, gaming laptops that are like you, they're like so obviously plastic. Uh, this is, you know, feels pretty good overall. When you're typing on the laptop, it feels fantastic. There's no keyboard flex, so it doesn't feel cheap at all. Uh, the only part of the laptop that I would say like doesn't feel super premium is the bottom. Doesn't feel super premium, but it doesn't matter. It has enough structure, so it's not a big deal. So, um, you know, I often prefer the slim Lenovo's over the uh, pros. It's just me. Um, and uh, it looks like, you know, this is a really good option. So that's pretty much that there. You know, if you have last year's model, 2023, there would be no reason to upgrade to this. If you're going from a 4070, if you're going from like a 4060 Legion 5 Slim 2023, you probably, I would not recommend upgrading. It doesn't make any sense. Even if you went with the 4070, it doesn't make any sense. Uh, but if you have an older model, you know, 2022 with a 3000 series uh, or your first gaming laptop or something like that, this is a very outstanding buy. Uh, especially for the price, especially nowadays, it, you know, prices are high. We're have, experiencing inflation. Things are really expensive. I totally get that. I am not a wealthy person by any stretch of that word. Uh, so I truly do get that people, especially my viewers, are looking for you know budget and making sure they're not spending an absolute fortune on a laptop. And I think this may fit the bill if you're looking for a premium laptop. It's going to last for a long time. Not going to spend an actual fortune on it. This is going to be a nice laptop. So. I will put some links to uh, my storefront down below. You don't have to use them. Um, Lenovo, they're not through Lenovo itself. They're actually through a third party. Uh, and if you do happen to use them, then I do get a little bit of commission off things that you buy. Uh, really anything, I guess, on the website. Uh, I also have some Amazon stuff down there too. I don't have any sponsorships through you know, like Lenovo or anybody. I don't have any sponsorships at all. Um, you know, that does help me quite a bit maintain non-sponsors. You know, I get sponsors all the time. I get offers to do sponsors all the time and I always turn them down. That's just the way that it works for my channel. I'm just not even remotely near that level of being comfortable taking sponsors from people. So uh, if you do shop through my Amazon links, it is actually very helpful for me. Uh, if you shop through any of those like, impact links, if Lenovo or Best Buy or whatever the stuff is that I'm reviewing, it does help me quite a bit um, buy more stuff because I buy these laptops, right? Like this is the first, this I have to this date, maybe in the future I'll get review units, but to date right now, I have never been sent a gaming laptop by anybody. I've bought all of them. So uh, it really does help me quite a bit uh, on this channel. And a lot of people have been using them and I am very grateful for that. So uh, regardless, wherever you buy it, doesn't matter. Uh, 
it's a good laptop. I like it quite a bit. Uh, pretty happy with everything all around. Make sure you probably look for a sale if possible. And if you do, I think you're going to be pretty happy with it.